Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm going to show you a technique that might revolutionize how you cook your steaks. I want to take a chance to thank today's sponsor, Sheath Underwear. It was designed by a U.S. Army soldier on a second tour of duty in Iraq. Basically, it's hot, it's miserable, and he realized that there must be a better way to do underwear. Now, when I'm outside doing barbecue, I'm dealing with the heat and the humidity since I moved back here to Kentucky, and there's a lot of sweating and there's a lot of chafing. I've been wearing these for a couple weeks now, and let me tell you, they are extremely comfortable. They have a dual pouch design that reduces skin-to-skin -skin contact, which means less sweating and less chafing. You're gonna feel so much better. The guy who designed these is the Elon Musk of underwear. He's an absolute genius, and I thank him very, very much. So, if you guys are interested in these, you can click on the link below and use the promo code MSBBQ, or go to sheathunderwear.com slash MSBBQ to get 20% off. Trust me, your undercarriage is gonna thank you. So that's sheathunderwear.com slash msbbq or just click on the link below and use the code msbbq to get 20% off. You won't believe how comfortable they are. <laughs> <laughs> today I got out the old reliable PK grill. It's been sitting neglected for a while, but today it's gonna get some love. I really like this thing a lot and we're gonna use it to make the steak, but we're not gonna use the grill grates. We're gonna be using cast iron. The steak we're gonna be cooking is filet mignon and the technique that we're adding is, you guessed it, smoked beef tallow. Now. A lot of times fillets get knocked because they're not as juicy and they're not as flavorful as a ribeye. But with the smoked beef tallow that we add, it's gonna be just as juicy and even more flavorful than if we did this with a ribeye. One of the reasons a lot of times fillets come wrapped in bacon is because people know that to improve the richness of the cut, it needs some more fat. The problem with that is it never really cooks properly. It'll be kind of chewy. One side might get burned if you put it on the grill. It's not an ideal situation. Doing it this way, you get all the benefits that they're trying to get with that bacon, but you're doing it with beef tallow and you don't lose anything by doing it. As a matter of fact, you gain that smoke flavor. The first thing we need to do is get our cast iron on top of these coals. And the way I have this thing set up, I have all the coals on one side. So I have a hot side of the grill and a cool side. That'll be important later, but we're gonna get this cast iron right over those coals and want it to get screaming hot. I'm talking five, 600 degrees. To prep this steak, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. We have, of course, the filet, and then we have salt and pepper that we're gonna to use to season the steak. And, of course, we're using the beef tallow. So this Wagyu beef tallow, I discovered it when I was trying to do briskets. Basically, I ordered every kind of tallow on Amazon, found out that this was the best, and so I've been using it for a lot of different things. And with steak, it is phenomenal. But here's a key thing you have to do. Make sure that you smoke the tallow to build up that smoke flavor. Smoking a steak usually doesn't work very well because it starts to get rubbery. You might get good smoke flavor on it, but then it starts to pool water on the top and the bottom. And when you go to sear it, it doesn't sear well. That's because the boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And in order to get a good sear, you have to get the surface of the steak at least to 325. Even hotter is better. As you can see by the smoking, you can tell this pan is extremely hot. I use my Thermopen IR, it's over 580 degrees. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I gotta get some beef tallow on there to get the sear. So I'm gonna take a spoon, spoon on some of the beef tallow, and I'm gonna use this paper towel to wipe it around really quickly, and then immediately steak goes in the pan. Smoked beef tallow going in. And you can see that that's very, very hot. So let's move this around really quick. All right, steak in. That's a good sound. Press it down so that the whole surface makes contact with the cast iron so you get an even sear all the way across. Oh, it smells good already. Man, that smells incredible. Woo, smell the pepper. My mouth is watering. This is gonna be really good. So the key is don't mess with it. So you wanna give it probably 60 seconds, 90 seconds before you even peak. Right, and you want that even brown all the way across. That tells you that you have the sear that you want. That's where you're building flavor. So unlike barbecue, where it takes a long time at a low temperature to build flavor, grilling, you build flavor quickly at a high temperature. So different kind of cooking, but you're still after the same thing. You want that outside surface to be bursting with flavor. When we're searing a steak like we are right now, what we're after is something called the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is something that takes place on the surface of meat 
at temperatures above 325 degrees. That's the browning that takes place. A lot of times people will say that it's caramelizing. It's not really caramelizing. It's the Maillard reaction that's happening. And there are hundreds of compounds that get made and they're super savory. And there's something very primal about searing a piece of meat and then eating it that makes it taste so, so good. That's why when you go to steakhouses, a lot of times they'll say that they sear their steaks at 1500 degrees or something crazy like that because what they're after is a completely even and nice dark brown crust on the steak as a result of the Maillard reaction. So that's a reaction that maybe you never heard about when you took chemistry in high school, but it's a reaction that you really do care about, trust me. If you need a little bit more fat, you can add a spoonful of the smoked tallow kind of around the steak. So just drop it around, because you don't want the surface to get too dry. There we go. Let's take our first peek. We're starting to get there. That's actually looking really good already, but let's get it back on just a little bit more brown. We don't want it to get hard, but we want an even brown surface all over it. Who remembers when I flipped a steak on this exact grill with Jay from the Barbacoa Boys? It was, it was pretty toasty, pretty toasty. There we go. If you feel like the spot right where the steak is on the pan is cooling down, you can move it to a new place so it's fresh, hot metal, and it works really well to keep the sear process going if you don't have enough heat built up in the pan. So this one's nice and hot, I don't have to do that, but I think it's time to flip it. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, see that brown? All the way across. I'm gonna put down a little bit more smoked beef tallow. There we go, it's looking good. Then steak in. That's the sound you wanna hear. I want to hear Jim Gaffigan say that when you're cooking bacon, it sounds like applause, it's like, yay, bacon. They get the same thing when you do this with a steak. Yay, steak. And uh, as much as I love bacon, I think I'd rather have this steak right now. We're getting close. As you can see, we're nowhere close to done, but that's okay, because we're going for the sear first, and then we're gonna finish it off. We're gonna try to get to about a medium rare. A lot of times people will do the reverse sear, and they get the perfect level of doneness throughout the steak, and then when they go to sear it, they either don't get the kind of sear that they want or they end up overcooking their steak in pursuit of that sear. Doing it this way, you don't have to worry about overcooking the steak because you get a great sear. Now that I have a good sear on both sides, I'm gonna take this and move it to the cooler, still hot but not nearly as hot part of the grill and let it finish off. Now I'm just gonna close up the grill and let it finish cooking slowly. This thing just hit 125, so I'm gonna pull it off. We're gonna let it rest for a couple minutes. Now, I know that a lot of people say that you don't really need to rest the steak, and then some old school chefs will say you absolutely have to. I've tried it both ways, and I found that when you let the steak cool a little bit, then you get slightly better results than cutting into it immediately. So you can choose whichever one you want. Uh, if you are really hungry and have to eat right then, sure, you'll be totally fine. You'll lose maybe 3% more moisture if you cook it, or if you cut it rather, immediately. But I like to let it rest. Makes me feel good. Makes me feel like, yeah, what I did to that thing, it's gotta take a break. This thing has had a chance to rest for a little bit, so let's cut it open and see what we've got. This is exactly how I like a steak. So I'm going to cut it and show you one trick to add even more richness and more smoke flavor to this thing after it's off of the grill. Instead of using butter or something that's gonna change the flavor of the steak, take your smoked tallow and spoon a little bit of it just over the top of all this so each bite has more richness from the fat and more smoke flavor that we got when we smoked this for about eight hours. Time for a taste test. So I can see I have you know, a sear on both sides. The inside is done just like I like it. I have salt and pepper on there, and this thing is glistening from all of the fat that we added. <sighs> this should be smoky and good, let's see. Oh yeah. 
There's no other way to get that flavor on a steak. If you try to smoke the steak, it never works out right. But my goodness, mm, I'm finished up eating. I would pay good money for a steak like this at a restaurant. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I've ever had a steak at a restaurant that was better than this taste to me right now. This is incredible. So you get the smoke that you usually don't get with a steak and you still get the sear. You get all of the benefits all wrapped into one and the fat adds a richness and a juiciness that you wouldn't otherwise get. This is a win, 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 win. So you can make it at home for cheaper. It can be better than a steakhouse. It can give you the smoke flavor that you want. It can get you the sear flavor on the outside that you want and it can be perfectly cooked steak like you want. So I don't know of any way that this is not winning. So you guys should get out there, try this and let me know how it turns out. I know we, we can film the end in a second. I got to eat more steak. It's so good. Mm. It's perfect. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed this steak. As a matter of fact, I actually ate the whole steak on the cutting board that I was meant to give to other people. I guess I'll have to cook another steak. That's okay. It's a good problem to have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time. It's so good. The only bad part about it is there's no steak left.